Well, first let me say that sustainability is a very difficult thing to define for every person in a perfect way that relates to his or her life. So a general definition might be that sustainability is about using the interest of nature and not the capital. The two most common questions are why do it and how do I do it? Uh, you know, why is often uh, couched in, I understand this, but other businesses aren't doing it. How do I stay competitive? What's the business case for uh, acting sustainably? And then how is, you know, if people are interested and want to get started, you know, where do they start? You know, how does it apply to their specific business? How do they take that? those four system conditions and turn it into something that they can work with. There's a growing demand for environmentally sound goods and services and those who can produce them will respond. Um, and uh, so it's, you know, we live in a great time in a, in a great country and around here in a great part of the world and there's responsibility that goes with that um, opportunity and it's just asking yourself what you can do to make it a little bit better. If you break the building down into simple pieces, it's the site and paying attention to light orientation. So we have a southern orientation. The length of the building faces south. Um, then it's materials. And we tried to have materials that were low or no toxicity, no off-gassing. Um, it could be glues. We used all water-based glues. And the third thing is systems. So you look at how your light works do you just flip a switch on or do you ha try to capture as much daylight as you can, which we did in this building in a variety of strategies, and then also your heating and air conditioning system is, is the other one um, that we did quite differently. So, so the building easily breaks down into those three pieces. We do a lot of innovative things. So we have a heat exchanger which recovers waste heat from our pizza oven to heat our hot water. My electric water heater went on for one cycle in, in almost two years now. So that's a bottom line savings. That's a solid, uh, it, it's actually been such a savings that we're going to go back and install it in my, one of my other restaurants. Uh, we use efficient cars, we have bicycle delivery, and we look at a lot of things. We tr tend to look upstream at things that are coming into our business, whether it's packaging, soaps, or the flour we put into our dough. 80% of the people that call me or call our company to get us to do some work for them, it's because they know that we do green building and we do sustainable construction. We know how to do it. We know where to get the materials. We know the subs and suppliers that know where and how to use those materials. I do see the trend growing. Um, fortunately, I got into it purely because I was very interested in it and I felt like it was the right way to be building. And uh, it's taken off. It's become, a, it's become a niche for me and it's enabled me to start my own business and, and be successful at it in the first year. I think for those of us really growing uh, sustainable and organic foods, uh, the sheer demand is enormous. Uh, you know, our company has experienced uh, 19, 20 to 30 percent growth the last 10 and 12 years. You know, I don't know that a day goes by that we don't get letters from customers. and just thanking us for how we grow these products and how good they taste and you know I think I think customers just really appreciate the quality I mean it, it kind of blows my mind that somebody would take time to sit down and write us that our sweet corn tastes so good you know? <laughs> to me I think that's kind of funny I mean who has time to do that <laughs> we were venting steam into the atmosphere we decided to cap that run that steam, excess steam that was just being lost through this big set of, uh, well, just like a big radiator, it's a heat exchanger. We run, we've sucked full air through that now and that heats up the air going into our core dryers by about 50 degrees. So we have to use less, we don't use as much natural gas. In fact, it's helped us out so much, we can uh, almost run one core dryer instead of two core dryers. So it, it boosted the average temperature going in the dryers by about 50 degrees. Huge savings on natural gas there. It is a five-store chain in Portland, Oregon. As 
significant as a national chain with hundreds of stores? Well, it may be because our five store chain in Portland, Oregon actually has a happy workforce. We have vendors that are in our community who are staying in business because we buy from them. We have community banks that we're able to support because we're borrowing from them and we're able to provide an adequate return to our shareholders. There's national companies that have thousands of stores that aren't accomplishing any of those things, even though they may have sales that are larger than ours by a factor of a thousand. Our mission is to promote sustainable food systems, environmental stewardship, and local economic development through a working urban farm. We as a nonprofit have been in existence since 1999 and before that we had informal programs that, that took place on the property since about 1997. I'd say the backbone of our programming is youth education. We work, we partner with local schools um, and other youth service organizations like Boys and Girls Clubs, Campfire Girls, Boy Scouts, those kinds of groups um, to bring kids onto the property really anywhere from kindergarten up through high school. We bring them onto the property and um, essentially provide experiential education opportunities for them to learn about sustainable food production. Higher education has a really big responsibility and the products and services that they buy could help shift towards the kinds of companies that are trying to move towards sustainability and that could then in turn inform the students in such a way that the students will go out with the knowledge, skills and values that will help businesses become sustainable and also buy the products and services from the companies that are trying to do the right thing, that are doing well by doing good. At the end of the day, people need to sell. And it, so that there's learning to sell and learning to do the real core business stuff is critical to making a difference in sustain it, just saying we're sustainable and trying to do those good things to be sustainable doesn't cut it at the end of the day you got to have somebody who's willing to buy the product and you got to be able to sell it to them for the price they want to pay and it, that's really hardcore business and and the academics need to understand that the students need to understand that and the businesses that think I'm doing these good works need to understand that that just because you're doing those good works doesn't get it there you got to have a product that people want to buy I think the power, the one unlimited resource, is really is the power of human creativity and imagination. Uh, that's what we haven't tapped.